Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Learn Just Be With Mahesh. I guess everybody would have seen yesterday how uh, Chandrayaan landed, so Vikram, uh, the rover, so all those things uh, had a soft landing, so it's an awesome day, I would say. So maybe in the future, uh, 23rd of August may be called as Chandrayaan 3 day is what I would say. So with that being the context, so uh, let's come say what happens if you take um, a Google Cloud Data Engineering interview after 23rd of August and let's assume the interviewer is a Indian so what kind of questions you can get a kind of a little uh, interesting scenario based uh, interview questions is what I wanted to share so let's get into the stuff so the first thing right so people would have already seen so ISRO had already shared some of the clips uh, on I guess uh, 19th of August itself so in Twitter and in Facebook so you may see some of the pictures from Chandrayaan uh, so uh, like you from the Chandrayaan, so the pictures of moon, so you would have seen this. So if this kind of data comes in, right, so pictures, uh, what could be the kind of questions you may get uh, is what I wanted to basically ask. So let's assume these images are coming from, so definitely Vikram is going to send, the rover is going to send uh, uh, the details, uh, Vikram uh, Pragnyan, if I'm not wrong, so I hope I spelled it correctly. So the rover and uh, so we are going to get some images about the uh, unseen part of uh, moon. So if this has to be processed in uh, Google Cloud and as a data engineer, what are the stuffs which we need to consider? So if this is the kind of question asked by the interviewer, so the approach which you can take is something like this. So I have an architecture here. So the entire architecture is to process and store the satellite images which we get. So from uh, Vikram, so the data is going to be transferred. So let's not worry about how it's going to be transferred. So let's assume it is going to be transferred. So once it gets transferred, so uh, assuming ISRO is going to use Google Cloud Platform. So the data is going to be stored in Google Cloud Storage because it's primarily a blob, a binary blob, a binary large object storage, blob storage, a perfect fit for keeping the images. Good. So along with the images, definitely we'll have some metadata information. So the location details, when it was sent, sensing time, lots of information we'll get it. So if we want to process that part, uh, so we can have two options. So if the data is little complex, we may think of using a ETL route uh, if it is not that complex we can directly do a uh, extract and load that is something possible so the destination is going to be BigQuery and the key part here is we should not keep the image in BigQuery rather we keep the image in Google Cloud storage bucket that is what we have to convey to the interviewer uh, reference gs colon slash slash that kind of reference you can keep it in BigQuery so this is one option and since it's India uh, so Chandrayaan is from India, so ISRO is in India, so definitely the data has to be in India only, right? So the location has to be definitely Mumbai or Delhi. So Google Cloud has uh, regions in Mumbai and Delhi. So that is what the high level architecture is going to be. Now considering the components, right? First key part which you need to highlight is Google Cloud Storage is definitely going to be the first product which we are going to use. The so first thing which you have to consider is the location which we already discussed, Mumbai or Delhi or you can use something like for a better high availability and low latency dual region is something possible i'll show you a demonstration real quick towards the end of this part so that is one thing and it has to be a standard storage class because we are going to access this n number of times so uh, a standard storage class is going to be a good choice maybe after a certain period you may want to apply some kind of um, um, life cycle policy that is something possible or if you feel these are very very precious data I would say definitely these are very precious data because nobody in the world has gone to the uh, southern part of the uh, moon so which we have already gone so if these data needs to be retained for a longer duration a retention policy is a good choice so these are the key points which you want to highlight it to the interviewer that way you can convey a very good information or uh, convey the knowledge which you have saying that you have you possess a very good amount of knowledge on google cloud storage so the next part is going to be the before coming to BigQuery, I'll come to the third point. So if there's no transformation, you can go with, that's the easiest one, the easiest task for a data engineer. Extract from Google Cloud Storage and load it into BigQuery. So uh, 
hopefully the data is that clean so if the data is not that clean so you want to do some transformation so for transformation you can go with data fusion uh, data flow these two things could be a good choice so you can also use other options data prep which I would not recommend now uh, because uh, data prep uh, is a third party tool from trifecta and trifecta has been acquired by uh, uh, Altrix so too many acquisitions so let's not get into that part so let's use a native solution from Google Cloud so and data fusion and data flow both are open source if you see CDAP and uh, Apache Beam so it's it should be a good choice so or if you say the transformations which I can do I can easily do it in SQL why don't we go with the option called as uh, uh, <coughs> extract load and transform in BigQuery so that's an option which we can use so once we come to BigQuery what are the design consideration or the key points which you need to consider first and foremost of the location uh, fortunately or unfortunately uh, we get only a regional data set option so you cannot create multi-regional option uh, specifically for Mumbai and Delhi so you can create it in Asia uh, I guess Asia is also not supported multi-region so multi-region is only uh, US and Europe is what it is there so multi-region will not work because this is a data from India we don't want to have it in a store this information in some other region so Mumbai or Delhi could be a good choice partitioning is a very very important stuff so you can think of sensing time so when the data was sent so that date time or timestamp information can be used for partitioning as most of us know partition can be done only on one field in BigQuery so that is something which we can use uh, and also clustering could be a good choice so as an engineer data engineer right from the beginning itself if you uh, turn on these stuffs right so the table is going to be very optimized for querying purpose you will not have a huge bill so you can consider using something like uh, uh, space uh, craft ID sensor ID uh, then world resource uh, WSR there is an option for specification world res resource specification path and row these are some things and uh, why I am specifically going with four uh, columns here is because in BigQuery uh, per table you can have uh, four fields which can be clustered so this is also slowly I'm trying to highlight it to the interviewer that is something possible and the most important thing as I mentioned don't store because in BigQuery we don't have a blob data type right in a database like MySQL Postgres you get those kind of data types but here it is a warehouse so we don't we get only string as a data type storing the base 64 encoded version of the image does not make it any sense so better to have the reference the GCS path would be a good choice so these are some design considerations which I can explain to the uh, interviewer so that way interview will definitely get an idea okay this person knows good amount of Google Cloud storage concept BigQuery concept when to use EL when to use ETL when to use uh, ELT so that's a good thing right so now you can pause and wait for any questions and uh, uh, answer the next part of it now maybe to pull your legs maybe the interview would wanted to see uh, yes this is all good maybe he's impressed so the next question which he may ask maybe the most trickiest question so which we would have always face in any kind of a real implementation what is that we are yet to receive the data meaning uh, we know so I guess uh, the next 14 days we are going to get the data let's assume it is delayed now you have to do it right away uh, so can the resource be idle no so what we can suggest in this case is leverage public data set from BigQuery there's in marketplace if you go and look for it you get data sets like Landsat which is in available in Google Cloud storage bucket uh, you can also get uh, European satellite uh, association if I'm not wrong ESA Planck machine sentinel to so you get lots of public data and these are already available in a Google Cloud storage bucket or in BigQuery table so leverage it so that way you'll get an idea how to play around with it so this is something which you can say so meaning you are not quite if the data is not coming you are still working on some of the pieces and you are going to work on a very similar data so this could definitely impress the uh, interviewer so with this being said let's jump into a demonstration where I can show you these kind of stuffs and do a real quick demonstration let's get into it so I have a project so I have just uh, changed it as uh, Chandrayaan 3 uh, data engineering so the first thing which I can do is I can go to marketplace 
So I can go to marketplace, I can search for uh, Landsat. So I get this information, uh, very nice information I would say. Um, they give it in a data set fashion so which could be the uh, big query piece of it so if i click on it it's going to take me to a uh, big query by the time that loads so i would like to also share this information that you can also download this entire information into a uh, google cloud storage bucket and you should be able to load it in so google gives you the option you can load it into a uh, cloud sql if you want if you want or the data is going to be huge so better use it uh, as a big query so that's something which you can leverage it so let's go to this one so sorry i guess the data set when it goes uh, yeah data set sorry sorry so the data set when you click on it it's going to show you the bucket itself the location of this bucket so you can click on the data and you should be able to see some images let me just show you one quick image of this so i have to navigate it's primarily a tiff image which they have it so just uh let me just go to one of them the navigation is good huge so let me open this one so let me open this public stuff and it should be downloading so by the time it gets downloaded uh, we can also see it is available in this location so public data set so you should be able to go and look into it so before i look into it let me just open this so this is going to be some uh, satellite image uh, which you see it right so similarly if i go to bigquery under public bigquery public data so you can look for geo data landsat or you can search for landsat you should also be able to get it you are not getting it one minute let me just uh, copy this maybe the big uh, the public project is not pinned here so there's also a video which I have done uh, where I have shown how you can pin a public uh, data set. So it is pinned now. So, so it has to be um, geo data. So let me just get that part. Yeah. Uh, geo data. Let me just get this sorry it, it has to be uh, this one storage cloud storage geo data you see this uh, star land satellite underscore index and you will see some beautiful stuff so what are the stuffs which you will see primarily here is uh, um, it's a partition field so you see it is going to be sensing time is the partition field and as i mentioned cluster by the four columns and if you look into it uh, this one sensor id uh, then uh, world resource specification uh, hopefully i have expanded correctly and the path so these are all string integers so that is something which has been uh, clustered and sensing uh, time is basically our uh, timestamp field which has been partitioned so good and the one important stuff which i wanted to show here is uh, that google cloud storage bucket the referencing part that's something which was a interesting part base sorry so you can see this base url which is really awesome so you can reference it and you should be able to get it. so this is a good part uh, where you can connect your google cloud storage bucket and bigquery this thing very nicely done so uh, coming to the the other part so when you create a bucket make sure make sure you create a bucket uh, i guess uh, i can have something like uh, chandrayaan images so Two options which we can use we can choose a single region we can use a single region like uh, Mumbai 
so when i use a single region i will get low latency which is very good so but if i want a very high availability and low latency that's where the dual region concept is going to come into picture where i can use asia and i can choose delhi and mumbai cost is going to high go high but reputation is something important we don't want to lose the data all those kind of stuffs so we want a very high availability this could be a good choice a dual region and class as i mentioned because this is going to be processed n number of times by the data engineer who is part of uh, isro assuming right so this is going to be a good choice and uh, since i wanted to protect this data so i may want to keep it for a very long time uh, is what i would say so retention so maybe uh, we want to use this data for say for example for the next 10 years uh, we can keep this so accidentally also data will not get deleted so this is one option so okay so and you can go ahead and create it so i can create it if the data is not there right you can delete the bucket so that is possible so i just need to i should not put the bucket or data inside this uh, otherwise i cannot delete it for the next 10 years so this is something which you can uh, do it uh, so the bucket is got created and you should be able to upload the data or some way there should be some way to get the data populated in it and once it is populated so for example let me try to uh, uh, populate some data and you should be able to uh, connect it via bigquery so let me just upload some data so the data which is mentioned here you should be able to do it either you can upload it or you can basically uh, upload it into this bucket so let me just upload it i have that downloaded already so here so let's upload it so should be fine and the retention right i have not locked it so i can still go and change it so don't worry about this part so let's wait for this file to be uploaded all right the file has been uploaded it's roughly around uh 731 mb so it took a little time so if you do it via gs util or g cloud storage command it's going to be pretty fast uh, but i use the go uh, the user interface it was a little slow so the next part which you can think of doing it is uh, go to bigquery so we have a dual uh, dual region one so here i can create a data set so i can call it as uh, chandrayan ds so underscore ds so if you see multi region as i mentioned it's only us and europe you we don't have it and we don't want this here because the data is going to be in multiple regions which we don't want uh, because it's isro's data it's india's data it could be kept in uh, the data set could be kept in um, mumbai so done the data set is going to be created Oh, already exist okay done so maybe there was a ui issue there so the data set is created so now you can create a table uh, when you create the table uh, this is what you can do it so you can browse this object and you should be able to get that and it's a csv uh, g zipped so change the format to csv and you should be able to put uh, data simple right whatever it is uh, first time when you don't know the stuff right either you can unzip it and look into it that's going to be one way or first time when you do it put auto detect that's going to be a beautiful option which you can think of and we will not put partitioning clustering in the beginning so you are just loading the data right you understand the data then you should be able to turn on the stuffs so you click on create it's going to be created so let me click on create uh, it has to unzip it and load it it's going to take a little while it's going to take a little while and if you're doing it via ui it will take a little longer time and you will see this kind of job created go to job this is going to start blinking for a few minutes once it is done we'll see the data so let's hold on for the table to be created all right the the table is created so and you should be able to see the columns which i mentioned so the data types have come up properly uh, so sensing this has come which you may plan to create it as a partition field so and always try to look at the data by using the preview it is going to be always free 
because what we have created is a native table. So, so that is going to be a good choice. So this is how you can explore till the data arrives. So that's the video which I wanted to share. Uh, hope you were able to connect Chandra and stuff with data engineering. Thank you for watching.